Good morning and welcome to the East of England showground for the first part of this Good Friday double, the Ready Power Peterborough Panthers versus the Coventry Bees. The Panthers were victors in the recent challenge against Coventry, but today it's a much more serious business with elite league points on the line. Three times World Speedway champion Nicky Pedersen leads the Panthers in 2011 and he'll be well supported by both Troy Batchelor and Christoph Laskowski. Making a return to the Panthers ranks today in the reserve berth is Norbert Koschuk, who missed the recent challenge matches after an horrific fall in Poland, but pleased to say that Norby is back this morning and he will partner Panthers doubling up rider Dakota North. Kasper Gomolski, who had an impressive home debut two weeks ago, lines up at number three, and his partnership with Bukowski could hold the key to the Panthers' success today. For the Coventry Bees, they are without Hans Andersen, who has broken a foot, sustaining a training run, so guesting for him this morning is former Panther Niels Christian Everson. And the Bees will be hoping to put in a better show than two weeks ago when they were comprehensively beaten by the Panthers. The Bees once again use 16 year old Nick Morris doubling up for the Glasgow Tigers in the reserve berth, and they also have doubling up rider Travis McGowan in their ranks this morning, replacing Richard Sweetman, who's riding this evening for Leicester up at Edinburgh. So, with the riders on parade, a chance now to look down both team lineups. For the Ready Power Panthers, at number one, it's Nicky Pedersen. At number two, it's Lena Sundstrom. At three, Kasper Gomolski. And his team partner at number four is Christoph Buskowski. At number five, for the Ready Power Panthers, it's Troy Batchelor. And the two reserves this morning. At number six, it's Norbert Koschuk. And at number seven, Dakota North. For the Coventry Bees at number one, their guest this morning, Niels Christian Everson. It's Travis McGowan at number two. Ryan Fisher lines up at number three, and Kenny Larson comes in at number four. Number five is the captain of the Coventry Bees, Edward Kennett. And the two reserves for the Bees this morning, Nick Morris at number six, and the man that could be a trump card for the Bees this morning at number seven, Shamik Pavlishki. So the serious business of the Sky Sports Elite League gets underway on what is a baking hot day here at the East of England showground in front of a massive crowd. Let's hope the track action matches the temperature. And so now let's join your commentator this morning, Dave Rowe. A very good morning. Welcome to the East of England showground on this uh, glorious Good Friday. And it is the first Elite League action of the season here at the showground. It's the Panthers Elite League opener. It's Coventry's second. They raced against Birmingham last uh, Friday night. And we're looking forward to what should be a cracking day. We have the weather with us and uh, big Elite League points up for grabs for both Coventry and Peterborough. They've done the Hokey Cokey Cup a couple of weeks ago. Now they're going for Elite League points here and also at Brandon this evening. Well, Coventry forced into a change in the build-up to the meeting with the injury to Hans Anderson, the broken foot sustained in a training run when he fell over a, a tree branch. So they brought in guests. They certainly have a guest here tonight who knows every inch of the showground in Niels Christian Everson, who is currently going well for Kings Lynn, his new club. He'll be racing for the Stars tonight at the Norfolk Arena. And tonight, Coventry, in fact, will use Chris Harris as a guest. So they've certainly, uh, on a busy day of action, they've done as much as they can as far as guests are concerned for Anderson. Coventry have Travis McGowan riding here in Heat 1. He's uh, racing this morning. He'll be uh, racing for Somerset tonight. And the Bees will use rider replacement in that position at uh, Brandon. For the Panthers, Nicky Pedersen, the new skipper, impressive here in the Hokey Cokey Cup a couple of weeks ago. And Lena Sundstrom as well. Of course, they did open up with a 5-1 here in that challenge match couple of weeks ago. So here we go for the opening race. McGowan goes off the inside. Gate number two is Sundstrom. Everson goes off gate three and Travis McGowan is off the outside. Dan Holt is the referee. Pedersen goes off the outside. The way they go to race start by McGowan. Everson missed the gate. Pedersen comes across bumping and barging involving Sundstrom and Everson. Sundstrom misses out and it's Nicky Pedersen who has the advantage into the third bend. McGowan who made a really good start in second place. It's uh, Everson in third and Sundstrom after trying to take Nicky Pedersen wide into the bend. He's now gone to the back, but the Panther skipper here has the advantage. Decent second place so far for Travis McGowan, and it's Niels Christian Everson, the Coventry guest in third. I would think Coventry would be fairly happy to escape from heat one with a 3 3 if that's how it turned out, because he's a strong Panthers combination in the opening heat. And so far, McGowan riding a good race. Sundstrom trying to wind in the ground on Niels Christian Everson with a, just a, a lap and a half to try and make a passing move. Pedersen is away and well clear. It's McGowan in second place. Everson sat there with his teammate, and so far, no real challenge from Nina Sundstrom. So Everson happy enough to sit there in second place for the Bees. Nicky Pedersen almost the length of the back straight clear of this opening race. They are getting somewhat close to a second, third and fourth, but not quite close enough as Nicky Pedersen wins the opening race. And the Bees run second and third. Everson uh, is second. McGowan is third. And Sundstrom out the back. It was a pretty tough first bend, that one, really. 
Travis McGowan made a good one. Nicky Pedersen came across from four to get the advantage. And then there was a good battle between Sundstrom and Everson. Everson managed to force him out and establish himself with his teammates. And therefore, the opening race is shared. Nicky Pedersen with the victory. Second place, Niels Christian Everson. Third, Travis McGowan. And it's Panthers three, Coventry three. Heat number two then with uh, Norbert Koskuch riding in red, Dakota North goes in blue, Nick Morris in white and Shamak Pavlitsky is in yellow. First appearance for Dakota North for the Panthers, he's been superb so far in the uh, Premier League with Somerset Road for the Panthers at Coventry a couple of weeks ago but his first showground appearance and also the first appearance this season for Norbert Koskuch who had a really nasty crash uh, in Poland a couple of weeks ago so he's had to rest that but he's okay to ride today and uh, his second season in the Elite League Norbert Koskuch should be able to pick up some points in this uh, division I would think he had a pretty good run last year as well got his way around the showground and could be a decent reserve Coventry also hopeful at reserve as well with Pavlitsky obviously has done plenty of damage there last year and Nick Morris has made a really good impression as well in his doubling up berth so far for the Bees. So an interesting looking heat two on the way with the Koskuch riding in red off the inside. Morris in white off gate two. North in blue off gate three. Pavlitsky goes in yellow off the outside. Here we go with heat number two. It's a good start by Nick Morris from gate two. Pavlitsky coming across from four as North gets squeezed out. Koskuch gets the bend in from the Pavlitsky goes round him and North will try and go round Morris to try and get the third and I think he's done so. It's Pavlitsky with the advantage then. Koskuch in second, North has salvaged third, but uh, back through comes Nick Morris down the inside as North moved off the line slightly, and uh, Nick Morris trapped him and uh, moves his way back through into third place. Good ride by the Coventry youngster, and now the chase on up front as Koskuch tries to put the challenge in on Shamak Pavlitsky, who showed last season he enjoys riding around the showground. A couple of late season appearances where Pavlitsky and points were really important. It's the kind of track that Poles love, it's big, fast, wide open spaces, and Pavlitsky taking full advantage here in this second race. Koskuch in second. Morris holding a good third after repassing North is going to try and make the same move on him and then Tom's coming off the fourth bend and North tries to put his, put his way down the inside it's tight for third and fourth and North has repassed Nick Morris Morris has moved off the line slightly and that was a crucial mistake and that's going to save a 3-3 for the Panthers as Pavlitsky and the pressure from Norbert Koskuch in the way for the line and Pavlitsky has just held on Pavlitsky from Koskuch with North in third place and Morris back splendid racing in heat number two great stuff from all four riders passing and repassing all the way and that fourth bend line certainly providing some close action Dakota North really strong on Nick Morris to push his way through Morris made the mistake after he trapped North earlier in the race with the same manoeuvre and then Norbert Koskuch working right to the end of heat two as he uh, battled with Shemek Pavlitsky but Pavlitsky with the victory second place was uh, Norbert Koskuch third Dakota North and a second shared heat of the meeting makes it Panthers six Coventry six so Peterborough 6, Coventry 6, moving on to Heat 3. Some great action there in that reserves race and uh, track already serving up some super action. Here we go with Heat 3. Kasper Gamolski, who was spectacular here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Christoph Bukowski, it's a very, very exciting combination here. Uh, these two Panthers riders, mind you, the Coventry pairing is a pretty exciting one too. Ryan Fisher and Kenny Larson have had a, they already have their fair share of race wins between them in their three meetings so far this season. Fisher um, back with the Bees this year after some eight years away racing with Edinburgh in the last three years in the Premier League. And Larson, of course, the uh, big winter capture from Newcastle, and he beat Nicky Pedersen around here in the Hokey Cokey Cup. So. Uh, already finding his way around the East of England showground. Gamolski, the teenage pole, very much a star of the future, and the Panthers fans are going to love watching him this season. You see so many talented young poles coming into the Elite League, and Gamolski is certainly another one of them. Ryan Fisher going in white off the inside. Bukowski in the blue off gate two. Larson goes in yellow off gate three, and it's Gamolski in red off the outside. Here we go with heat number three, and away they go. It's a good start the inside by Ryan Fisher. The elbows come in, Fisher gets to the bend in front. Larson squeezes his way inside Gamolski. Around the outside goes Christoph Bukowski, and Bukowski has the advantage over the commentary riders with Fisher in second place. Larson in third, Gamolski is at the back, but here comes Ryan Fisher back down the inside of Bukowski, and they'll go wheel to wheel to second. That Fisher takes him wide. It's a really good ride by Ryan Fisher. So good. They send Larson through in the second place as well. And now Bukowski will try and hit him back. 
Bukowski tries to cut back on Larson, but he gets it all wrong off turn four. He locks up completely. And Gamalski might come through in third. That was a terrific ride by Ryan Fisher. Found the gap himself, took the gap, and took Bukowski so wide that Kenny Larson said thanks very much and came through into second place. And commentary away here, one and two, with Ryan Fisher over Kenny Larson. Bukowski is trying to regain ground in third place with Gamalski in the back. And a really good start here by commentary at the East of England showground. They were battered here 62 30 a couple of weeks ago when they've started start much better here tonight and this is a superb 5-1 coming up here from Ryan Fisher and Kenny Larson who take maximum points for the Bees over Christoph Bukowski and Kasper Gamolski. Terrific first lap's action and Ryan Fisher making the move down the inside of Bukowski into the second lap and it was oh so crucial because Fisher took him wide and Larson read the move and switched back from the inside and shot through the gap and Coventry had maximum points as a result. Ryan Fisher the victory, second place Kenny Larson, Bukowski in third and it's Peter Bush 7, Coventry 11. Coventry deploying what looks to be a strong combination in Heat 4. Edward Kennett scored a maximum at Brandon last Friday. 15 out of 15 for the uh, new Coventry captain. And he rides in white, partnered by the race winner of Heat 2, Shemek Pavlitsky. For the Panthers, Troy Batchelor riding in red and Dakota North going in blue. North, as with his uh, Somerset teammate Travis McGowan, has a hefty road trip on the way later on today. In fact, North was riding at Swindon last night in the Birmingham's shock victory, and uh, both he and McGowan will be heading back down the southwest to Somerset for their evening fixture at the Oak Tree Arena. Good Friday is always the busiest day of the season. Matches all through the day, and riders who are having to race more than once in a day uh, to get all the meetings in. And we're looking forward to Heat 4 with Pavlitsky riding in yellow off the inside. North in blue off gate 2. Kennett goes in white off gate 3. And it's Bachelor in red off the outside. An early advantage here with Coventry. 11 points to 7. Pop on Heat 4. Bring green line comes on from Dan Holt. The tapes didn't rise. Tapes didn't go off, so there'll be a restart there. Tapes uh, just didn't go up. It wasn't the case of anyone uh, touching or breaking them. But uh, the tapes went up on the outside. Edward Kennett uh, in serene enjoyment of the fact that he's got the race lead. But nobody else has got very far because the uh, bikes off the inside, uh, the tapes off the inside didn't go up. And uh, certainly Pavlitsky and uh, North couldn't get off the start line OK. So there'll be a delay once they get the tapes fixed in a rerun of Heat 4. So the tapes have been repaired, the riders coming back into line for the restart of Heat 4. Bachelor and North for the Ready Power Panthers and Kennett and Pavlitsky for the build base speed. He'll be happy with what they've seen so far. They are 11-7 up. They may feel they should uh, or could be six points up rather than four after Nick Morris held the third place for three laps of Heat 2 but then was passed by Dakota North. But overall, they'll be happy with the way they've been starting and uh, obviously the uh, forceful ride of Ryan Fisher in Heat 3 is what's got them the 5-1 out of that race when uh, if I think if Fisher had left that move any, any later in Heat 3 you may well have seen Bukowski just stretch himself clear but uh, really good move that by the American. Heat number 4 then on the way with Pavlitsky in yellow off the inside. North in North Gate 2. Kennett goes in white off Gate 3 and Bachelor in red off the outside. Here we go then with heat number four and they're away this time. It's a great start by Edward Kennett. Good one team by Pavlitsky. Kennett will try and take, well he does take Bachelor really wide, so wide that Dakota North comes through and Coventry have got one and two again as Pavlitsky has the advantage with Kennett in second place. And does Pavlitsky know Kennett's there? He does now. And meanwhile the Panthers are racing each other for third place because it's still um, Dakota North holding it over Bachelor who is struggling in the early stages. Kennett went wide off turn two but Pavlitsky looks for him and this could well be a, a dream start to this uh, morning's meeting here for Coventry because Pavlitsky again with plenty of pace has the advantage looking all the way for Eddie Kennett going round the outside Batcher in third north is now tailed off and in fact has got a mechanical problem and Pavlitsky again looking all the way for Edward Kennett into the third bend but they're riding pretty close to each other there's actually no real need for it because Troy Batchelor is offering no threat whatsoever now Kennett sweeps around the outside of Pavlitsky who covers a perfect inside line and the evidence the early on here today is that Coventry have got a big opportunity to take a big result here on this good Friday morning because that's a 5-1 easy as you like Edward Kennett and Shemek Pavlitsky over Troy Batchelor Dakota North pulled out and the Panthers have got a big comeback to make here. Eight points down with four heats gone. Two consecutive Coventry 5-1s. Edward Kennett continuing his blistering start to the season with a race victory. Shamak Pavlitsky made a great start too. He was there all the way. And the Panthers are eight down after four heats with Bachelor 5 one by Kennett and Pavlitsky. It's Peterborough 8, Coventry 16. Thank you.
Really good start to the meeting then for Coventry, leading by 16 points to 8, but the Panthers will be looking to fight back. And uh, Polish duo of Kamolski and Bukowski, who suffered that uh, setback in Heat 3 when they conceded maximum points to Fisher and Larson, they are uh, get a chance to make some amends here. Coventry have Niels Krishn Everson going off the outside. Partner is Travis McGowan. And uh, word from the pits was that the Panthers have already had a bit of a team meeting and get together with Trevor Swales and Nicky Pedersen having their say. After the story really of the opening races is that Coventry have been faster from the gates and also stronger in the first bend. And that's where uh, the meeting has been uh, won and lost in the first four heats. There's plenty more action to come, of course, before we get to the stage of uh, league points being gathered. But uh, Coventry's start here is, is actually resemblant of the playoff semi final here way back in last September. The only difference is that the, uh, the track doesn't resemble a plough a plow field today. It's uh, circuit perfectly prepared, it's good for everyone. And uh, Coventry doing the job 16 8 in front. Gamolski in red then off the inside. McGowan in yellow off gate two. Bukowski is in blue off gate three. And uh, Everson goes in white off the outside. Here we go. For heat number five, Coventry defending an eight-point lead. Mike's red, green lights on. It's done again by Travis McGowan. Might get elbowed out there, and Everson will try and get the run around the outside. The Panthers this time have one and two, and it's Gamolski and Bukowski with Everson shooting down the inside. Of course, Everson knows every inch of the showground, and he's got past Gamolski, and he's got past Bukowski, or has he? Bukowski is back around the outside into second place, but Everson chasing hard. Everson holds an inside line, and he'll go level into the third bed. Commitment from Everson, commitment from Bukowski. Bukowski He's still with the advantage. Everson in second place. Gamolski in third. McGowan is at the back. And now Bukowski moving himself slightly clear. It's a great move by Everson on the back straight. He almost got past both Panthers riders. And he's still pretty quick here. Niels Krishna Everson. He tries to move him. And now he'll try and make his move around the outside. Everson swings it wide. Bukowski holds a decent inside line. I think the pole's got it just about under control here at the moment. Which might knock the gap back down to six points. Because Gamolski's got the third over McGowan. And it's a good ride by Christoph Bukowski. Because that was quite some challenge by Everson in the early stages, but it's a great ride by Bukowski who comes off uh, the fourth bend with a victory. Bukowski over Everson with uh, Gamolski in third place and McGowan at the back and uh, that was a terrific first lap there. The Panthers riders made the start, Gamolski and Bukowski. Niels Christian Everson made the big dive down the inside. He knows that move of course from his many years here at the showground. It took him past Gamolski. Bukowski managed to close the gate just in time and the Panthers gained a couple of points back in heat number five with a 4-2 and it's Panthers 12, Coventry 18. Panthers then clawing a couple of points back in H5 and they have their skipper Nicky Pedersen who's looked the fastest rider on show today here by a distance so far. He won he won in 58.9, that was the fastest time so far by over a second, mind you. Edward Kennett was impressive in his first outing and he has the inside gate for this heat number six. Nick Morris is Kennett's partner going off gate three and Linus Sundstrom going in blue off the outside. He'll be keen to bounce back after running at last place in his opening out at 12.18, five heats gone, and uh, plenty of good racing in the first third of this morning's meeting. Of course, the two sides will do it all again at Brandon tonight. Right, it's taking a bit of time to come into line here for heat six. Kennett is there on the inside, and Sundstrom is there on the outside, waiting on uh, Nicky Pedersen. He comes into line now, and Nick Morris off at gate number three. Commentary. Six in front, Kennett off the inside, Pedersen gate two, Morris gate three, uh, Sundstrom off the outside. Here we go for heat number six, green light comes on, be sure hold and Kennett and out trap Nicky Pedersen. Kennett takes Nicky Pedersen wide, Morris is out trap Sundstrom, Pedersen will try and come back inside Edward Kennett and Kennett's got Pedersen at the moment with Morris in third place over Sundstrom. Kennett's left a bit of a gap on the outside, but he's so quick, Edward Kennett, and he leaves Nicky Pedersen. Morris in third place, trying to fend off the challenge of Nina Sundstrom. Sundstrom inside, Morris. Morris will try and cut back up the inside on the back straight for the uh, second time, and Sundstrom's come through, taking the second place. But how quick did Edward Kennett look today and this season, really, because he is showing a clean pair of heels to Nicky Pedersen. He made a lovely start off the inside, 
shoved out the Dane and Nicky Pedersen quite simply has no answer to Edward Kennis in this heat number six. We've said before the season started and all the uncertainty over the winter it could and should be a big breakthrough season for Edward Kennis and the way he's starting is very very impressive indeed. Looking fast, looking confident and about to defeat a treble world champion around his home track. Edward Kennett round turns three and four for a thoroughly convincing victory. Dominant over Nicky Pedersen. Third place Nina Sundstrom and a frustrated Nick Morris at the back after leaving that gap on the inside going into the second lap that allowed at least for the Panthers Sundstrom to regain third place and partner Pedersen to a 3-3 but the form of Kennett there so so impressive as he made the start and really Nicky Pedersen had no answer to it. Kennett with the victory, Pedersen second, Sundstrom third, three apiece and it's Peter number 15, Coventry 21. So Coventry maintain a six-point lead and uh, they have Ryan Fisher and Kenny Larson on track here who've got them a 5-1 in heat three. They're up against Troy Batchelor who's got the inside gate so it could be a very interesting first bend with Batchelor and Fisher going uh, head-to-head -head or maybe elbow to elbow and uh, Norbert Koskuch might be a man who will feel he can take some advantage. He looked to generate plenty of pace in heat two when he was chasing Shemek Pavlitsky and you would have to suspect that uh, on the early evidence Koskuch might well take a ride of Dakota North as the meeting goes on if Koskuch can maintain that form he showed in heat two. Coventry of course have Pavlitsky in the locker for several extra rides here tonight. Again you have to say based on the early evidence Pavlitsky will take one of Norris's rides and also one of McGowan's rides. That will give Pavlitsky six rides and potentially a bumper haul with points. So Coventry feel quietly confident with this six point lead. Bachelor in red off the inside, Fisher in white off gate two, Koskuch goes in blue off gate three and Larson in yellow off the outside. Heat number seven in the way, much better start that time by Troy Bachelor as uh, Fisher takes Koskuch wide, that allows Larson through and Bachelor's got the lead but Fisher has his designs on passing him. Fisher will dive down the inside of Bachelor here and Koskuch going round Larson but Fisher has got the speed to move Troy Bachelor aside and take the advantage. What a ride by Ryan Fisher, Bachelor won't take two can't reach that he'll hit back on the inside Fisher back around the outside is dramatic stuff in 8-7 and Ryan Fisher with the advantage it's Batchelor this time Fisher clamps Batchelor it's Koskuch in third over last time but Ryan Fisher never determined moving aside Troy Batchelor in that uh, heat number uh, seven we saw in the challenge match at Coventry earlier in the season and there's no love lost between Troy Batchelor and Ryan Fisher so uh, that continues there because it was so tight of that fourth member Ryan Fisher fast and determined last time is missing out here although he's trying to regain ground on Norbert Koskuch after losing out on the first lap but again Coventry will be happy enough to share the points and they do it with a sensational ride by Ryan Fisher to win heat seven over Troy Batchelor it's Koskuch retrieving third over Larson but Fisher with so much determination took the run down the inside and there's not many that move Troy Batchelor aside on that fourth bend but Ryan Fisher did just that and Troy Batchelor wanted to get straight into the pits after that race in fact he had to do a kind of a, a 360 or a 720 to get back in in time for the pits gate to open but Ryan Fisher has made that a second win of the meeting he's done it from the back he's done it with a forceful passing move on Troy Batchelor and he's maintained Coventry's six point lead they lead by 24 to 18 so we've had the uh, break for the track graders. We approach the midway point in the meeting, and heat number eight will uh, be uh, Linus Sundstrom and Dakota North for the Panthers, Travis McGowan and Shamek Pavlitsky for the Bees. Pavlitsky is unbeaten at this stage with uh, five paid six from two rides, and uh, the Panthers with Sundstrom, who's just picked up the one point so far, and was uh, gained in heat six, and uh, North also the one point gained in heat two. So commentary will certainly feel that Pavlitsky, if he can keep his form going, might be able to get something here in uh, heat eight. They have McGowan off the outside, who's made a couple of fast starts so far, though he was uh, quickly shuffled to the back of uh, heat five. And he rode well in the opening race to get that 3-3 uh, with Niels Christian Eberson. So he has beaten Sundstrom once already this afternoon. Dakota North then going in blue off the inside. Shamak Pavlitsky in yellow off gate two. It's Nina Sundstrom in red off gate three. Travis McGowan goes in white off the outside. Coventry with a six point lead going into heat eight. Oh, the takes again. Failed to go up. And again, it's on the inside where the problem has occurred. That is uh, North and Pavlitsky who have been adversely affected there and for the second time today we have a tape failure with the uh, tapes on the inside not going up so that will be a further repair job underway and then a restart with all four.
Thanks, Ray. Right. That gives us an opportunity now here to speak to the uh, Rally Car Panthers captain So we try again with P Tate, with the tape seemingly repaired again. Lena Sundstrom and Dakota North, Travis McGowan and Shemek Pavlitsky. 18 to the Panthers, 24 to the Bees. Obviously, uh, maximum of four points available to Coventry here tonight. Maximum of today, I should say. Maximum of three available for the Panthers. And they do it again at Brandon tonight. But of course, the Panthers as the away team could get four, and that's exactly what they did almost this time last year. In fact, Good Friday was much earlier in the season and uh, also much wetter and colder because uh, last Good Friday was thoroughly miserable. It opened up with that heat one crash here with Heppenbrock going into the fence heavily and uh, ended in a really wet meeting at Brandon where the Panthers won it by a distance and uh, Coventry at that point could not have believed they would go on to enjoy the end of the season they did. At the moment they're starting 2011 in a much better fashion albeit a bit late after all the problems over the winter. North goes off the inside, Pavlitsky off gate two, Sundstrom off gate three, McGowan off the outside but away this time and a great start by Pavlitsky. He was level into Ben but meanwhile through on the inside goes Dakota North. That was a great turn back because Pavlitsky had made the start. North with a surprise move down the inside. McGowan has the third place over, uh, uh, slightly off the pace leader. Sundstrom will try and come back on the inside this time. McGowan going to try and go back round him into the second uh, lap. And Nina Sundstrom's got plenty of work on here. I'm not sure if Pavlitsky has got the pace he wants here in this heat. He looked like he lost some ground on the second bend. Now he seems to be rolling OK. But Dakota North has been uh, off the pace so far. He seems to have got his setup spot on in this heat. Eight. That's good news for the Panthers. What's not such good news for them is Nina Sundstrom, the man who tore at the Premier League last year, uh, who is at the back. And meanwhile, Pavlitsky is reeling in the ground big time on Dakota North with one lap to go. It's North over Pavlitsky. It's McGowan holding more still a fairly comfortable third place. Pavlitsky going wider and wider, trying to pick up drive and trying to pick up speed and might get the line down the inside. What a ride by Pavlitsky down the inside. North will try to hit back. Pavlitsky holds the bay. Brilliant ride by Shemek Pavlitsky to win heat eight over Dakota North. Third place is Travis McGowan. What a brilliant ride by Pavlitsky. North would not have seen him coming there. Pavlitsky was, uh, well, he was way outside somewhere in another part of the showground on turns one and two when he went so wide. And then he got the speed, made an enormous long straight down the inside of North. And meanwhile, there was an important third place as well for Travis McGowan holding Sundstrom at bay and Pavlitsky on fire here at the showground with victory in heat eight and a commentary 4-2. It's Panthers 20, commentary 28. The ball keeps his own and beat the Hulk very much on the Eight points in it then, moving on to heat number nine with uh, Bukowski riding in blue off the inside for the Panthers. The unbeaten Eddie Kennett goes in white off gate two. Gamolski in red off gate three and Morris in yellow off the outside. You have to suspect it may well, well almost certainly be Morris's final ride of the meeting. Coventry sat with an eight point lead here and sat with the reserve who's unbeaten from three rides and can take uh, a couple more of extras as the meeting goes on. The Panthers are going to need to find something. They're going to need to find this mid a combination firing. Bukowski with a good win this is his second outing when he got the better of Niels Christian Everson. But uh, Coventry, certainly in the early first half of the meeting, have got enough strength at top and bottom of their order. We're up to heat nine at the moment. Coventry have still got three unbeaten riders in uh, Ryan Fisher, Edward Kennett and Shamak Pavlitsky. And that is uh, an enormous weapon to have at this stage of the game but uh, these two poles can they hit back over Edward Kennett who starts in between them in this heat number nine Bukowski riding in blue off the inside Kennett goes in white off gate two Gamolski in red off gate three and Nick Morris goes in yellow off the outside Panthers 20 B's 28 heat number nine is at the takes then Star Marshall gets the back, green light comes on, away they go, and again, an explosive start by Edward Kennett. Bukowski pegs the inside line to try and move him aside. Kennett with the power around the outside. Morris has got round Gamolski. Would you believe it? Morris has passed Gamolski for third, and uh, this could put the Panthers into a tactical right position as Morris tries to even pass Christoph Bukowski. Edward Kennett with the advantage then. Second place for the Panthers, Christoph Bukowski. Morris is right in the play here, ahead of Gamolski. Bukowski is got the pace to try and pass Edward Kennett but if he gets it all wrong Nick Morris will charge down the inside and he might do just that it's Kennett from Bukowski and Morris in third spot it's Gamolski who's struggling in the back there goes Bukowski in 
inside, Kennedy will try and go back round him on the back straight, and they're going to race wheel to wheel into the third, Ben Bukowski over Kennedy, Bukowski, Bukowski lifts over Kennedy, Morris in third place, Kamolski on the back, and can Kamolski get into play here against Dean Morris, it's a great ride by Bukowski, Kennedy's looked unstoppable so far, but can Kamolski pinch the third over Nick Morris with just over half a lap to go into the final bend in fact, Morris holds it tight, Kamolski finishing fast, Morris holds the third, Bukowski wins, Kennett second, Morris third, and crucially, that maintains an eight-point lead for the Panthers, for the Bees, rather than ten, which would have been the case if Kennett had not been overtaken by Christoph Bukowski. Coventry would certainly have taken a 3-3 prior to that race, and they would have expected a Kennett victory with Morris at the back, but it, as it turned out, Bukowski rode a stormer to pass Edward Kennett, but Morris held a crucial third over Kasper Gamolski, and that maintains Coventry a crucial eight-point lead, and it means that Nicky Pedersen cannot take a tactical ride in Heat 10. Fair play, though, to Christoph Bukowski for his second win of the meeting, Kennett second, Norris third, and it's Peterborough 23, Coventry 31. So Coventry going to heat 10, eight points in front, and the Panthers looking for Nicky Pedersen to get back to winning ways here. His partner is Lena Sundstrom, we were wondering if the Panthers might contemplate a reserve change with Sundstrom having struggled so far, but he has the inside gate looking to turn his meeting around. Coventry have Ryan Fisher and Kenny Larson. Fisher unbeaten, and now of course he has uh, what in many ways is the ultimate test in taking on Nicky Pedersen. Kenny Larson there too. Of course it was Kenny Larson who won this race when the sides met earlier in the month. So interesting, uh, the performance of Fisher so far with uh, six out of six is mega impressive. The stereotype of course of the American riders is that they uh, they like the smaller tracks, not so good on the big ones, but Fisher fired up and keen to prove a point in the Elite League this season and doing just that in, the, in his opening two rides. Sundstrom then off the inside, can the Panthers hit back? It's uh, Larson gate two, Pedersen gate three, Fisher off the outside, and away they go, and this time Sundstrom have made the start, Larson gets squeezed down behind, Sundstrom and Pedersen, Fisher will try the big blast around the outside, Nicky Pedersen should cover that one off, and the Panthers with one and two, but with Ryan Fisher right there, looking to make a challenge, Sundstrom covering the inside, Pedersen around the outside, it will need to be some team riding again, because Ryan Fisher is going to do all he can to split them up, Fisher will go for a line round the outside, but he is Comes up by Nicky Pedersen, great ride by Pedersen. Fisher looking around the outside, he's got more pace than Lena Sundstrom, but if Nicky Pedersen sits in there with the uh, youngster, he might just get him home for a crucial fight one that will bring the Panthers back into the meeting. That's it, they have split slightly on this third lap, and that might bring Fisher back into play. It's Pedersen from Sundstrom, Fisher gaining ground big time on the third lap, trying to dive one round the outside, might look for a cutback. Pedersen is checked out and clear, but Sundstrom holds that second place. Fisher again doing all he can to make a move around the outside. Fisher again with the speed round the outside, Sundstrom coming on the inside, but Fisher's going round him, Fisher will storm round, Sundstrom, he's gone down, Fisher falls, and that will be a Panthers 5-1 from Nicky Pedersen and Nina Sundstrom, Kenny Larson in third place, and Ryan Fisher had done the hard work, he got round the outside of Lena Sundstrom into Ben 3, but perhaps too much speed going in, just slipped down, I think his bike was slightly clipped by Sundstrom, but no damage to the rider, and Ryan Fisher has been so superb early on for Coventry, and almost salvaged a second place from that race, instead has to push his bike home, great entertainment again, and the Panthers come back with a 5-1 in Heat 10, that puts the meeting right back in the melting pot, Pedersen and Sundstrom over Larson, and it is Peterborough 28, Coventry 32. So the interval complete, the uh, Bees still hold a 32-28 advantage, they've led since heat number three. Heat number 11 on the way with Troy Batchelor, Norbert Koskuch, Niels Christian Everson and Travis McGowan holds his place here in heat number uh, 11. I think many people would have uh, half expected uh, Shemak Pavlitsky to ride here in yellow, he is unbeaten from three rides. And could have uh, teamed up with Niels Christian Everson but McGowan holds his place in this race. I'm sure we'll see Pavlitsky in heat 12 to replace Nick Morris. Maybe it's a case of not wanting to do back-to-back uh, -back rides, but uh, anyway, I'm sure the Panthers would have also expected uh, Pavlitsky to be deployed in heat number 11. Coventry are four points in front. Of course, if the Panthers had been able to use a tactical ride in heat 10, that would have been the end, been an 8-1. And they'd have, in fact, ended up three down rather than four. Heat 11 on the way, with Everson in white off the inside. Bachelor in red off gate two. McGowan in yellow off gate three. 
and Koskoc goes in blue off the outside. Panthers back in play with that 5 point and 8 10. Can they continue the comeback? Ask you to go. Away they go, and it's a good start by McGowan. It's a good start by Emerson. They've shoved out Troy Batchelor, and Batchelor will go in between uh, the uh, two riders. He'll get the better of McGowan, and uh, Koskoc will try and come through as well. But whilst this is going on, Niels Christian Emerson here has the advantage. It's uh, Batchelor in second place. Koskoc tries to come down the inside of McGowan, who is, uh, I have to say, he's defending well today. He's riding the right lines. He's still got the third off. He goes across the corner off turn two, and Kosko should get down the inside there. McGowan will try and hit back, and now Batchelor reining in ground on Everson. Everson knows he's there. Batchelor flying around the outside. Everson needs to ride wide as they move him out, because Batchelor is getting up the speed just like Pavlitsky did in heat eight. And Batchelor is much quicker than Everson. Batchelor is going right round the boards. Everson will need to come across to cover him off. He's done so, so far. And now Batchelor will dive from the inside, and Everson will try and cover off Batchelor. Dives down the inside of Everson. Everson will try and come back and back straight for the final time. Everson's there. Batchelor just about holds him at bay. Great ride by Batchelor. Everson will try the inside once again. Batchelor around the outside. Everson on the inside. It's Batchelor just. It's a great ride by Batchelor to get the better of Everson. And it's Koskoch taking third from McGowan. And the commentary riders both making mistakes there in race number 11. McGowan going across turn two on lap two to give Goskoch a chance to come through. And Batchelor, after spying around the outside for a lap or so, turn back smartly on Niels Christian Everson there into the uh, final lap to get the advantage and hold off the challenge and the Panthers are right back in business now with four heats to go as Batchelor gets the win over Everson with Koskuch in third place and it's Peterborough 32, Coventry 34. So the Panthers very much with a foothold back in the meeting now, 5-1 and 4-2 in heats 10 and 11 four heats to sort this one out. Kasper Gamolski riding in red, Dakota North in blue, Ryan Fisher in white, Shemek Pavlitsky in yellow. Pavlitsky takes the ride of Nick Morris and uh, Coventry with one and three and we're hoping to make them count. We saw some uh, heroics from Dakota North in his previous ride. He scored three and one from three of course was overtaken by Pavlitsky in blistering style and uh, Gamolski so far just one point so far but the Panthers showing signs of getting back into the meeting big time with some improved first bends, but also there's a great ride by Batchelor in 11 to reel in and then overtake Niels Christian Eberson and bringing it back to two points. And of course, Pedersen and Batchelor will have a big part to play in the final part of the meeting. And of course, the Panthers also sat with Bukowski in heat 14 as well. 12 on the way, Pavlitsky on the inside, Gamolski on gate two, Fisher on gate three, North on gate four. And where they go, and Fisher made the start, Pavlitsky has made the start, they've closed on Gamolski between them. Gamolski goes over the inside run on Fisher, and will try to go back by him. Gamolski, Fisher has gone somehow around the outside, that's brave and committed, and it's 1 2 to Coventry. It's Ryan Fisher and Shemak Pavlitsky with North on the inside, Gamolski looking quicker on the outside but Gamolski being blocked by his teammate Dakota North and Coventry here have got a 5-1 going in heat 12 it's the 5-1 they wanted uh, from the uh, way the race stacked up on the way and it had to be done by Ryan Fisher off the second bend with an absolutely committed ride to get around the outside and he made to do just that and Coventry from this situation should bag a maximum points but now North is trying to real, real ground back in on Pavlitsky they were battling in heat 8 and they might be battling again in heat 12 Gamolski not having the effect he had in the challenge match. North again trying to storm down the inside of Pavlitsky who will need to ride defensively. Fisher is there covering the outside line. Panthers lost ground there off the second bend. They're chasing each other. Pavlitsky hit the fence going into bend three but should still hold it. Gamolski takes a fly around the outside and goes down. And Coventry take a 5 1 from in 12. Ryan Fisher, Shevak Pavlitsky still unbeaten. It's. Uh, it's Dakota North in third place and Gamolski went down on the final bend going for the big blast around the outside. He is up, he's against the air fence and Coventry have moved back into a six point lead. The way that race stacked up on paper, Coventry needed to score big in Heat 12 and they've done just that. Ryan Fisher with his third win of a superb meeting despite a really nervous moment coming off turn two when his opponent lifted but he got it with Pavlitsky for a maximum 5-1 advantage and with three to go it's Peterborough 33, Coventry 39. Well, the lineup of eight number 13 is uh, a mouth-watering one to say the very least. The pressure is on the Panthers very much because they trail by six with three heats to go. But the big guns are firing here big time. Nicky Pedersen, Troy Batchelor, Niels Christian Everson, and Edward Kennett the lineup for an absolutely enormous race. Nicky Pedersen goes off the inside gate. He's already had a, a look at the uh, the track surface just beyond the start line as well as just before it. 
Troy Batchelor fired up after changing bikes and riding well to win heat to number 11 when he got the better of Niels Christian Everson. Tough one this time because he has Everson and Kennett, but Pedersen off the inside will look to dominate the race. And if the Panthers can get a 5-1 here and get back to within two points, they've got Bukowski in heat 14 who's been going well. And they still have a chance in this meeting. Coventry, six up. They've been in front all day so far. Well, they went in front in heat three. Can they bring it home for their first away win of the season? Pedersen rides in red off the inside. Everson in white off gate two. Bachelor in blue off gate three. Kennedy goes in yellow off the outside. A massive heat number 13. Bit of movement from Troy Bachelor, but the referee's happy with it. They have our gate in Everson. Everson pegs the inside, and in fact, the, the red lights have come on. The red lights have come on. There was some movement from Troy Bachelor on the start line. I thought the referee was leaving it running, and to be fair, in the end, Bachelor rather hampered himself by going wide, but the referee has called them back and uh, I think that's a fair call as I called it as they left the tapes Bachelor was definitely edgy but uh, as it went on he did go too wide and Everson was pegging the inside line so we're going to go with it all again and the uh, two minute warning is about to sound for all four riders So they try again with heat number 13. Bachelor may feel he's had a slight escape there because he's gone too wide off the on the first bend. He'd definitely given his place to Everson and Edward Kenning was going to be coming in as well. So maybe a, a slight let off. Nicky Pedersen made a perfect start from the inside. Can he do it again in the rerun? Start Marshall Corey and these four star riders up to line. Four big names and uh, Panthers needing a big result. Ideally for them, a 5-1. I'm really sure a 4-2 would be enough. Pedersen riding in red. The Panthers know already that they are set to drop a home point here, whatever happens. But uh, they urgently require a victory in this 8-13. Pedersen on the inside. Everson gate two. Bachelor gate three. Kennedy gate four. Rerun this time. They're away well. Really tight going in. I think the Panthers may have it. But again, Bachelor has gone too wide. Pedersen clamping Everson. Kennett sending Bachelor wide at the back straight for the first time. Bachelor squeezing around Edward Kennett into the third bed. Everson going across the corner as he tries to pass Nicky Pedersen. And Bachelor has got the outside run going again. And now he'll try to switch back on Everson. It's a great ride by Bachelor if he can hold it. Fantastic riding. Everson once again caught out by Troy Bachelor, who's come from absolutely nowhere to join his teammate Nicky Pedersen. In fact, he's got so much pain, he almost clipped Nicky Pedersen. And that's bringing Everson back into it. He tries to move down the inside. Bachelor will clamp Everson. It's, it's Pedersen and Bachelor with the advantage. Everson can find no way through, and the Panthers are going to get back to within two points here and set up a huge shootout in heat 14. It's Pedersen with the advantage. Bachelor, who's ridden superbly in second place. Third is Niels Griffin. Everson still battling on to try and pass. Repass Troy Bachelor, caught out once again by the Panthers number five, and Everson gaining speed again into the final bend. But Nicky Pedersen's got the advantage. It's Bachelor looking on the inside. Everson coming around the outside, but Bachelor hangs on for a 5 1. And it is Nicky Pedersen and Troy Batchelor over Niels Christian Everson with Edward Kennedy at the back. Great riding again by Troy Batchelor to come up with the goods again, along with Nicky Pedersen. Did so well to hold that second bend when he came down the inside. And they're back to within two points with two heats to go. And heat 14 is going to be absolutely crucial. Troy Batchelor teaming up with Nicky Pedersen. They'll do it again clearly in heat 15. Who will Coventry pick in 15? Because Kennett's gone backwards in his last couple of rides. Everson yet to win a race. It may well be Pavlitsky will get the call for that one anyway. But with two weeks to go, it's Peterborough 38, Coventry 40. Pressure back on, heat 14 on the way. Christoph Bukowski, Norbert Koskuch, Kenny Larson and Shemek Pavlitsky is the lineup. 38-40. Coventry would dearly love to uh, wrap it up here in heat 14 and not have to go up against Pedersen and uh, Bachelor for match points in heat 15. They have Pavlitsky sat here unbeaten. Pavlitsky unbeaten with 10 paid 12 from four rides. Larson's not had such a good day. Three paid four from three rides. For the Panthers, it's Bukowski who's gone well after a poor first ride. Bukowski has scored seven from three, and the, his partner is Norbert Koskuch, who scored four and one from three. So again, it's a really tough race to call this heat number 14. The Panthers showing fighting spirit determination to come back into the meeting on a couple of occasions when they've looked to have been in big trouble. They've dragged their way back in. Bachelor, the catalyst for that, with two great rides to 
come past Niels Christian Everson, who's not won a race on his return to the showground. Who on earth to Coventry pick in heat 15 if it's uh, it clearly it's going to be crucial one way or the other, but uh, who on earth to Coventry put in heat 15? Fisher probably, with his three race wins, I think it's going to be a good call. Could, yep, be Fisher and Pavlitsky. Heat 14 then on the way, Larson on the inside, Koskuch on gate two, Pavlitsky on gate three, Bukowski on gate four, green light comes on, and away they go, and Pavlitsky again makes a good start, but Larson does not, Pavlitsky has taken his man really wide, that's given Koskuch the one up the inside, now Pavlitsky's ride has given Larson the chance, it's Koskuch who's taken the advantage, Pavlitsky in second place, Bukowski in third, and the Panthers have a big chance here, because Pavlitsky is taking his man wide, he hits the fence going into the first bend as well, controls it, but Bukowski is going to come through, last on the back and Panthers coming up the storming finale as Pavlitsky goes back round Bukowski and goes so wide again on turns three and four, scraping the balls to try and pass Koskuch. Koskuch knows he's there, but he knows he's there too late. Pavlitsky has been unbelievable. He's got round the outside of Koskuch and Pavlitsky comes out of the bend in front, but last on the back. Pavlitsky has come from third to first. It's uh, Koskuch in second place, Bukowski in third. Koskuch goes back from the outside. Koskuch now regaining ground on Pavlitsky rolls the inside line. Koskuch right round the outside. Pavlitsky trying to block it. Here comes Koskuch. Koskuch going round Pavlitsky. Pavlitsky rising wide. Wider and wider. Koskuch keeps it wound on. Pavlitsky and Koskuch raise the red line. Koskuch gets it. Koskuch with an absolutely stunning ride in heat 14 to beat Shabak Pavlitsky. What an unbelievable race heat 14 was with Pavlitsky going from third to first. And then he went back to the inside and Koskuch went round the outside, right round the balls. Absolutely stunning ride by Koskuch, taking it from Pavlitsky on the run to the line. We have seen an unbelievable meeting here at the showground this one side, and it will go to a last heat decider with the scores all level and the Panthers with momentum and the Panthers as clear favourites. Thanks to that ride by Koskuch. Second place was Shemek Pavlitsky, beaten for the first time today. Third, Bukowski, and with one race to go, 42 apiece. So the Rhymes is on track for Heat 15, 42 points apiece. What a wonderful meeting here at the East of England showground. The showground circuit serving up the kind of racing we know it's capable of doing. And, uh, well, these two teams who were so nearly out of action at the start of the uh, season, well, they've, uh, they've put in an absolutely amazing battle here. Great racing between the two. Coventry in Heat 15 deploying Shemek Pavlitsky and Ryan Fisher. You wouldn't have put too much money on that before the, uh, before the meeting. And uh, Pavlitsky has turned up in the wrong helmet colour, so he's having a white put on with the clock counting down. He had the one-minute warning, and Pavlitsky having his helmet colour changed needs to get it on and needs to get round to the start line. Being told to go round the quick way. Clock is counting. Rossiter on the track telling him to make his way round quickly and Pavlitsky is doing just that. As I say, Pavlitsky and Fischer is the Coventry lineup for Heat 15 and you wouldn't have put money on that with the Coventry team here lining up with Niels Christian Everson at number one and Edward Kennett starts from the meeting in fast and fantastic form at number five but it's the way the meeting has ebbed and flowed Fisher has been consistent throughout but he is going off gate four which has not been a great gate so far today the Panthers have choice of gates because Coventry pick gates in heat one in heat one and they pick one and three and so Panthers get the choice here Nicky Pedersen will try and cover the inside just as he did in heat 13 he'll look for more from Bachelor but this time we only need to beat one Coventry rider if Pedersen's in front the Panthers here are favourite to turn it round on Good Friday but Coventry have two of their star men in play in Heat 15 what's going to happen over the next minute or so Pedersen off the inside Pavlitsky off gate 2 Bachelor off gate 3 Fisher off the outside points on the line Heat 15 away great start by Pedersen great start by Bachelor Fisher couldn't make it off and Pavlitsky tries to go inside Troy Bachelor Pedersen sits there with Bachelor lets him go around the outside he can't quite get up with him yet Fisher now has taken up the chase in third place under pressure from Bachelor uh, and giving Bachelor a real race it's Pedersen with the advantage. Fisher, I think, has gone past one. Here comes Ryan Fisher, almost up with Nicky Pedersen. He's gone past Troy Bachelor. Bachelor will try and come back at him, and Pavlitsky will battle on too. But Bachelor has gone back round Fisher. It's Pedersen with the advantage. Here comes Pavlitsky down the inside. And now Fisher gets that push out. Bachelor is the Panthers hero. There were three abreast there going into that third lap. It's unbelievable racing. And the Panthers look set to get the result they wanted. 
across split second there. Pavlitsky's inside cut back. Could have taken both him and Fisher through. Fisher is one of the wheel of his bike trying to pass on both here. It's Pedersen with the advantage. Pavlitsky here wider and wider. And then Pavlitsky might get trapped on the inside there. And I don't think Pedersen knows that Bunch was there. Pedersen blocked Bunch off. It's all in the last bend. It's Nicky Pedersen. Here comes Ryan Fisher. Bunch are there too. Here come the Bees. And it's off. I think it's a 4 2 to the Panthers. It's an unbelievable finish. It is an incredible race. I don't think that Pedersen knew that Bachelor was there. And the four riders came out of the final bend together. And I call that as a 4-2 with Pedersen with the win. With, uh, with Ryan Fisher in second place and with Troy Bachelor third. A stunning race to end the stunning meeting. As I say, the Panthers there, I think, got trapped on the inside. I don't think they quite realised that they were with each other. Fisher and Pavlitsky were winding up the outside and that's one of the best races you will ever see this season or any season. We're awaiting the official result, but what a race, what a meeting and unbelievable action here at the showground as the Panthers, for my money, take it 46-44. So it is a 4-2 to the Panthers in the final race and that's one of the greatest speedway races you will see anywhere, all season, any season. I don't think that uh, Nicky Pedersen quite knew that Troy Batchel was on the inside. I think Pedersen might have been scared of Ryan Fisher there, but in fact, both Fisher and Pavlitsky were winding the outside up on that last lap and you just wondered whether both were going to screen past both the Panthers. Right As it was, Pedersen just made it to the start-finish line in front and Troy Batchel just held on for the third place and the Panthers have come from eight points down to win here by 46 points to 44. So an incredible morning at the East of England showground finishes uh, Peterborough 46, Coventry 44, two points for the Ready Power Panthers, one for the Bill Base Bees. The scores then for the Panthers, Nicky Pedersen 14, Lena Sundstrom 3 plus 2, Kasper Gamolski 1, Christoph Bukowski 8, Troy Batchelor 9 and 1, Norbert Koskuch 7 and 1, Dakota North 4 and 1. And for the Bill Base Bees, uh, Niels Christian Everson 7, Travis McGowan 2 plus 1, Ryan Fisher 11, Kenny Larson 3 and 1, Edward Kennett 8, Nick Morris 1 and 1, Shemek Pavel Pavlitsky 12 and 2. Big crowd here at the showground on a glorious Good Friday and they have been given entertainment of the absolute top draw. What a fantastic advert for Speedway it was and as I said before it would have been an absolute travesty if these two sides had not come to the tapes today to give us that entertainment. Fantastic stuff. They'll do it again tonight of course but the result from Good Friday morning, Peterborough 46, Coventry 44 and that's all from us on Clean Cut Sports. We'll see you later on. Good night.